Hello, and welcome back to another episode. This morning, you join me very much in the mood to have a trundle on down to Paradise City. Burnout Paradise on the Xbox 360 2008 is now an 11 year old game, well, almost an 11 year old game. And it remains one of the most important games in my collection. I adore this game, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But today, I'm wondering why on earth am I still playing this game? Why hasn't there been a sequel, a proper sequel to Burnout Paradise? In many respects, Burnout represents uh, a, 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 an idea. It represents, right from the beginning in 2001, this notion of chaos in amongst the system. In, in the first game that I remember playing back, back on my GameCube, an awful lot of people wrote about in the reviews and were talking about the fact that the, the, the modeling of the city traffic and the exquisite chaos that you could cause by driving erratically in that traffic was was full of impressive potential and for me really that that potential started to be you know, to really rear its head when and to you know veer in the right direction when uh when in burnout two point of impact 2002 they, they started to hint that this, this action was taking place not just in a series of set pieces, as in the first game, you know, here's a city block, here's a bridge, cause chaos. Rather, you were injecting your races into other people's lives. In that game, for example, one of my favorite uh, tracks in Burnout 2 is in and around an airport where there are people dropping off and picking up loved ones. You know, you've got civilian traffic. You've also got the traffic of people who are trying to run the airport, you know, picking up um, uh, luggage and uh, and just making their way around the, the outskirts of, of the site and here you are in a high powered vehicle trying not to uh, not to crash into them while trying to win a race and that, that was really exciting to me because I, I I'm always a sucker for, for a world in a computer game I think ever since I first played uh, Zelda on the Game Boy I've always loved the idea of little worlds in games and Burnout 2 was hinting at that. Burnout 3, Takedown, 2004 I believe, was for me a little bit of a letdown. See what I did there? It was a bit of a, uh, a step backwards in so much as they really focused in on the arcadey aspects of the game. Uh, racing against rivals, uh, both in the game but also on the couch, you know, your friends next year, was exciting and, the, and it was fun to to take your, your your rivals down and to engage in those glorious crashes and to see particle effects yet again just you know, flying across the screen the car coming apart at the seams as it were but they they in the, in that game and then in 2005 2007 there was dominator and uh, no sorry 2005 was um, burnout uh, legends i think and then Dominator. Those games continued that, that trend of focusing in on racing um, and the arcade as fun of, of racing and the aspects of being with your mates and having a laugh. But they, they kind of walked away from, stepped away from somewhat, the, uh, the feeling that you were in a world. They were much more linear, much more track-based, if you say what I mean. Um, and that just didn't interest me. And not only that, but also I was, I was doing a degree at that point in my life, studying archaeology. So I... Um, I wasn't tempted away from my degree to play those games. However, in 2008, Burnout came back into my life with the announcement of Burnout Paradise. And this was a very particular and special time for this game to come back into, into, uh, into my life, or this franchise rather, this gaming franchise. Uh, in 2008, I had just moved to York and I was a little bit, I was feeling a little bit lost in the world, I was trying to find a job and all that sort of stuff and Burnout Paradise along with uh, Gears of War are the two games that really got me through those days when I was settling into the city I could come home from my work I didn't have to spend a load of money going out to the pub and you know out and about in the city trying to find conversation instead I, I fell back in love with regularly playing computer games and uh, and this game fed me a lot. It, I, I genuinely enjoyed it. It's, it sustained me, partly because of the the action. You know, it's 
uh, blistering pace and you've got to sort of concentrate if you don't want to crash too often uh, but also as well because of that open world aspect aspect uh, Burnout Paradise takes place in a city Paradise City and this map uh, I actually remember seeing before the game came out a version of this map as a poster in I think Games Master magazine maybe I might be wrong uh, but this, this map uh, intrigued me because it's huge for a start but also every single junction is an event a race a challenge uh, a an event where uh, where maybe the the npcs in the game are, are there to try and take you out and you've got to try you're to last uh from a to b and a and b in these contexts are always another junction you're not you're not going down a dead end you are i suppose in that grand tradition of hot rods in um, you know American graffiti kind of style in the 50s, uh, teenagers just mucking about in cars. That's what you're doing. You're turning up at an event, and you're beginning. Uh, you're beginning a, a, a crazy course through what feels like a, an actual breathing city. And that, for me, was the was the fulfilment of this promise that was first hinted at in the original Burnout game. So it only took them seven years to get there, from 2001 to 2008. But since then, nothing. We haven't had uh, a, a, a proper sequel to this game. There was Burnout Crash, I think, a, a mobile game, an app that was released from Criterion. And then, since then, they've gone on to work on Need for Speed, of all things. And I can see why, you know, the people behind Need for Speed would hire these guys to do that franchise. But Criterion should have been working on their own you know, their own shit, frankly. Oh, I didn't quite make the jump. Um, instead, instead of instead of helping Need for Speed keep on limping along, in my humble opinion, um, in terms of its, uh, yeah, just, just another title. You know, Burnout Paradise was a great platform to really launch from. And since then, I mean, I think last year, roughly a year ago, actually, I think March last year, they released... Uh, Sort of a HD remix, sort of remaster, update version. It's basically the same game, but with uh, higher resolution and greater frame rates uh, for the P PS4 and Xbox One. And I was tempted to get it when I got my PS4, but at the same time, I don't really want to support it. I don't want to support just rehashing a game that already looks gorgeous. I mean, this game looks perfectly passable on the Xbox 360 to this day. I want them to make the follow-up and they simply haven't and I don't quite understand why uh, you, you, I suppose you could say that maybe maybe the 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 the, um, the the audience isn't there maybe this this type of game isn't as popular as it once was but I don't know I mean uh, well I mean that's somewhat supported in so much as Criterion have gone on to work on Battlefield 5 I think they're providing an element of the um, the multiplayer uh, oh, cool. Um, just, uh, just achieved something, apparently. Um, yeah, so th in that sense, I suppose they are chasing what is in vogue as a company. Uh, but, but the longer they leave it, the longer they let burnout just fizzle out, <laughs> um, the longer, I think, that I would say, the more they're going to struggle to really bring it back. When this game... This game sets it out for you so so beautifully. In fact, frankly, you could probably re redo this map, turn this map into a sort of a post-apocalyptic Mad Max type situation. Have the burnout uh, culture continuing. Maybe the burning out caused some sort of apocalypse, caused the economy to crash, and and the city now is just a ruin. And and you know reuse those assets. Uh, it, you could do so much with with this game and this franchise and using Burnout Paradise as the model and yet for some reason they haven't I just don't get it anyway shall we do an event let's crash for a second <laughs> so let's do an event we're approaching a junction here where I haven't completed this particular event a road rage to start all you need to do is hold the brake and the accelerator at the same time the two trigger buttons and this is going to be a takedown road rage type scenario so 18 cars I've got to try and take down 
in two minutes. Let's see how this goes, shall we? It's been a while. Yes, there we go. You see, and you've got all the glory of the of the, the like I say the particle effects, the that chaos is still very much part of the game. But it's all happening and all started at a junction in a city. This, for me, is the essence of the character of Burnout. And it's the reason I keep on coming back to this game. Uh, I can only hope that Criterion see the error of their ways and at some point, whether it, you know, whether through, I don't know, a campaign or uh, just through maybe it, it becoming more financially viable, that they're able to make a uh, follow-up to Burnout Paradise. But, ah, oh, I can hardly, hardly even express how much I would just love to see that happen. Incidentally, as well, this is the first time I've played this game with uh, a sound bar on my, uh, on my media unit here. That's quite meaty, actually, hearing the, the crashes with proper bass. Yes! Card takedown. How are we doing? Seven? Oh, no, oh! Got distracted. Come on. Okay, okay. Oh, no, no! This is the risk, you see, whenever you're starting from a standing still. Someone can just shunt you or T-bone you or something. Okay. Come on. Anyway, as ever, also in Burnout, you build up your boost by driving the wrong way down roads, by having near, near misses with other cars, and then you get to expend it at a time of your choosing by pressing, in this case, the, uh, the A button on the Xbox. Ah! <laughs> um, the other thing about, about this game as well that I always enjoyed was the, um, well, things like, for example, first of all, because this is a real world that you're in, or, you know, an open world that you're in, you can try and get to a garage and fix yourself. So let's try and do that. Uh, but also, all, all, all around, you see build... Ah! Oh! It's because I'm trying to talk and play at the same time. Um, all around as well, you'll see uh, billboards, such as the, these, which I have broken all of them in the city. Uh, but they, they are... Um, in and of themselves a little challenge built into the environment which is again it's, it's a feature of an open world game that uh the uh, the, 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 the 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 standard burnout racing titles just didn't have <sighs> yeah there's, there's just so many reasons that they, that they should do a follow-up to this but um but primarily because it's fun to be honest now, one thing that I would like to see in a sequel, in a follow-up, would be a feature that was in the original Burnout, I think. And less so Burnout 2. I might be wrong with that. Maybe it was in Burnout 2 as well. But basically, basically at junctions, when you cause chaos and crashes, you used to get a monetary value assigned to the damage that you caused. And I think that might have been in Takedown as well, possibly Burnout 3. In Burnout Paradise, you don't seem to really get that. You get, uh, let's see, on your driver's license. Uh, distance travelled, 2,810.1 miles. And then other things like your time played, percentage complete. Yeah, different things you've achieved in the game. But you don't get a monetary value for the violence and damage that you've caused. <laughs> Although I am an elite driver, that's at least something that you get in this game. Um, I would like to see that, because I mean, it used to be really quite fun in Burnout to try and cause as much monetary damage as possible to go, oh wow, you know, two, two and a half million, and then in, in comes a bus or something, and a truck that gives you a multiplier and doubles the damage or something. I mean, it, it, something like that would, would be fun. Now, that may have been a feature of Burnout Crash, the mobile game, but I simply refused to buy the mobile version of Burnout. It was not going to have have this type of atmosphere, or this sort of speed, or these sorts of possibilities. And, uh, you know, you, as my, my lovely wife often says, you train people to treat you as you want to be treated. 
And if you keep on saying yes to someone who's giving you rubbish, then they're going to keep on giving you rubbish. Um, now, something else that I loved in this game was the junkyard. So we start out in the junk shop, junkyard. That's where initially I, I chose my um, my car. But you could get these vehicles. The P1288 Special. 88 miles an hour, maybe. Very much modelled after the time-travelling DeLorean from Back to the Future 2. Uh, we have the Manhattan Spirit. You ain't afraid no ghosts, maybe. We have the uh, <coughs> GT Nighthawk, which is essentially Night Rider. This is a very cool car uh, to drive. And then the Cavalry Bootlegger, which I think is... Oh, the Bandit, isn't it? Isn't it? I've forgotten what it's called now. I'll put it on the screen. But this is also a fun car to drive. Uh, I though want to want just want to quickly to show you this one because the uh, the DeLorean is not only well sorry the not DeLorean is not only fun to drive but it's also fun to boost with and well there's one other feature so off we go now in uh, obviously Back to the Future when you get up to 88 miles an hour you can travel through time and you leave behind you tracks of fire on the ground how cool is that to see in this car. <laughs> it's a shame the tracks don't stay on the ground for a little bit longer, but that's nice to see, I think. That's really cool. Uh, this car, though, has one more feature. This is the specifically the, the DeLorean, or modelled after the, the DeLorean from Back to the Future 2. And I say that because this one, when you click the right hand, the left hand stick, it goes into hover mode, which is really nice. Now, unfortunately, the hover is only really a hover at this acting just above the ground. It's not actually flying as the, De the DeLorean in Back to the Future 2 does. So if you go off a big jump, you will... The car behaves in the same way that it would if it was on the ground. So really, you are simply hovering around. You can't suddenly find yourself flying at great heights. But this is fun. You know, it's pretty cool. Uh, click the stick again and you go out of hover mode. I also love the way that they have the camera struggle to keep focus on you as you're crashing. It's like someone's actually trying to follow you with their uh, ah, with their TV camera or something. It's cool. Um, this was a feature that they brought in in DLC, along with uh, actually a whole island for the for the game. Off to the east here, there's a this this ah, this island which I believe has its own license. Um, no, no. No. There we go. Big Surf Island info. So I'm only 33% complete on Big Surf Island. Uh, but all of this is, is precisely what kept me entertained all those years ago in York. And in that sense, I'm, I'm happy to, co to, to, to concede that maybe I have very much rose-tinted glasses when it comes to this game. Maybe... There simply isn't a market anymore for this type of open world, chaos bringing, racing title. Uh, and maybe I should just be grateful that I can keep on playing Paradise City in its in its uh, glorious Xbox 360 form. But it just feels so much like like a like a great starting point for something else to come next. It feels like like they could really build on on the what they've learned from the oh there you go fire tracks on the ground that's pretty cool so they do stay there for a little bit ah where are you and spin and no <laughs> there you go fire tracks on the ground cool um it feels like they could they could build on and learn from what they've learned in terms of the physics of this type of game perhaps bring in a little bit of what they've what they've learned from working on Need for Speed, or rather what they've learned not to do, perhaps, in those games. We introduce elements of, as I say, monetary aspects to the damage that you do in the game. And just go hell for leather, you know? 
on a follow-up. But, you know, I can dream. I can dream. We're allowed to dream. And I dream of Paradise City. It's as simple as that. Right. Boost. Let's see. Can we get a spectacular? Ah! At times it almost feels like you're playing F-Zero, doesn't it? Yes! Could have been better. Drive away. Come on. There we go. That's more like it. <sighs> Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little this little stream of consciousness about one of my favourite computer games. But also if you if you agree, if you also are missing or are uh, yearning for uh, an, an addition, a little bit extra from Criterion in the world of Burnout. You know, let, comment below. What, what would you what would you put into the follow up to Burnout? Would you um, would you add flight, for example? I mean, they added bikes and uh, motor but beach buggies in the the uh, Surf Island DLC to this game. Would flight be an interesting one? Just imagine being able to fly a, uh, a you know, like a Harrier or something through a motorway tunnel. That would be cool. So much potential. We can only hope that, uh, that one day burnout takes the next step. As ever, guys, until next time, do take care. Hang on. Bye-bye. <laughs> I could just crash cars all day, I really could. <laughs>